Hello everyone, hope you're having a lovely May. My name is Idris and I'm just gonna get straight down to business because uh, these Huns aren't about to defeat themselves if you know what I'm saying. I'm here to talk to you today about sitting down in a room alone with your eyes closed doing absolutely nothing. Sounds really boring, right? Well, no it's not and I'm here to tell you why. In this video, I would like to discuss meditation, my take on it, my understanding of it based on my readings and different things that I have learned. And this video is mostly for beginner meditators, people who are not quite sure what meditation is really all about, how to do it, what the right way is to do it. I definitely encourage you to do your own research, look at what is out there. There's tons and tons of information about meditation out there, so definitely do some research. But for the short answer, this video here is for you. First of all, get rid of any ideas about what you think meditation should be because I'm here to tell you there are an infinite number of ways to meditate. There are an infinite number of styles. There are an infinite number of techniques to help you get better. There is no wrong way to meditate. You can't go wrong. It's almost impossible. There are an infinite number of ways to get into that state. And I would venture to guess that you do some of these things often. First of all, I believe meditation is the journey towards focused attention and focused awareness. I'll say it again, the journey towards focused awareness and focused attention. Meditation can happen anywhere and at any time. When you get into the flow of an activity, baking bread, working out, dancing, playing an instrument, stapling paper packets, maintaining your lawn or garden, any activity that you basically give your full undivided attention to, that is a meditative experience. And I call it a journey for a reason. All those activities I just mentioned in which you can have a meditative experience, you might be thinking to yourself, when I'm doing those things, I am not focused. I'm not even thinking about what it is that I'm doing. There's an important point in there. During activities like the ones that I just described, the mind experiences a lack of complex stimulation. So when your main stimulation is one prolonged activity, the mind has space to become more active and will often go off on many interweaving tangents. This is A-OK. -okay. This is the reason many people say meditation does not work for them. Their mind is too chaotic. It goes off on too many, too many things and I'm just thinking too much and I can't clear my mind. This is exactly why meditation is right for you. You see, as we have experiences and have feelings about those experiences and have thoughts about those experiences and thoughts about those feelings that we're having about those experiences, our mind attempts to process all of these things. When you bombard your senses with constant stimulation, your mind has no time or space to process all this and this can contribute to a lack of focus. Meditation helps us to self-reflect and process our experiences so we can work towards responding to and communicating more effectively in future events. Participating in a meditative experience like the ones I discussed before is excellent, but it is the traditional act of sit-down meditation that usually intimidates people. It seems boring because of the inherent lack of stimulation, but that is exactly the point. As vast as the outer physical world is, there is an even more vast inner metaphysical world that has yet to be explored. Sit-down meditation is the process of that inner exploration, and it's just best to do that away from stimulation and away from distractions. Sit-down meditation, contrary to the term that I'm using, does not have to be done sitting down. Whatever is comfortable for you is fine. Just make sure that you're in a position that allows you to take deep, full breaths. Taking deep, regulated breaths has automatic physical benefits. It's something that we, as a society, do not put enough emphasis on, taking deep breaths and relaxing your stomach muscle. Closing your eyes is not necessary for sit-down meditation, but I personally find it very helpful to avoid distractions. Once again, this is where people will have preconceived notions about how meditation is supposed to go, and I wanna challenge you today to take off the pressure completely. Just sit down somewhere in a quiet spot, close your eyes, and see what happens. It's different for everyone. Now I wanna explain this. In the beginning, the aim of meditation is not to clear your mind. It is almost impossible for new meditators to do this. The aim of meditation is to allow your consciousness time and space to present you with things that it hasn't had a chance to show you or talk to you about yet, you know, in a metaphysical way, um, because you have been overstimulating your senses. Our consciousness is constantly trying to give us clues about our behavior and our emotions that are tied to certain events that we experience, but we're often too busy to hear any of it. Now, if you finally decided to sit down quietly, close your eyes and see what happens, the best thing to do at first is to observe what your mind does. 
pay attention and ask yourself some questions. What kind of thoughts are coming up in my mind? What's the nature of those thoughts? Are they positive thoughts? Are they negative thoughts? Are they about me and things I did? Are they about people and things that they did? Is it about the past? Is it about the future? Ask yourself what kind of emotions are tied to these thoughts? Do your thoughts jump around a lot? Do they focus on a central subject? Ask yourself, can I witness my thoughts without attaching emotions to what I am thinking about? Not attaching emotions to all the thoughts that you're feeling, just simply being able to observe is an important step to work towards. This is a journey, okay? Remember, the meditation is a journey. You're not gonna get there at the first step, and once you've done this for a while, you still have longer to go. It's a constant learning process, but you're learning about the most relevant thing to you in your entire life, you. So become aware of your thoughts as you're sitting down with your eyes closed. Try to notice patterns. Now I'd like to take some time for a metaphor. Imagine your consciousness and the flow of it as being a big, bright, beautiful, crystalline lake that is being fed by a pipe. Clear water is trying to come through the pipe, but something is blocking it. That something is actually many things. Each item representing an event, an idea, a thought, an emotion, or an experience that you haven't properly processed yet. You must take time to observe the obstacles in the pipe and then help them pass on so the water may flow freely. This process will take time. How much is determined by how often and how long you meditate. It's totally up to you. And because you keep having experiences and thoughts about those experiences and emotions about those thoughts and experiences, there are constantly going to be items that come up into that pipe. But the process of meditation allows you to have the flow of water and items be more regular. It's about things flowing in a harmonious way because eventually you'll have unclogged the pipe enough to where these things can flow freely and be processed more regularly. The process of unclogging the pipe can help us focus enough to eventually be able to clear our mind and give our psyche a true break from stimulation. What are you when you aren't doing anything, when you aren't thinking anything? What or who are you? Just pure awareness? Food for thought. Furthermore, specific meditation exercises can be wildly helpful to increase focus and can be beneficial to our mental and physical health. There are tons of guided meditations online that you can do. There's YouTube videos, there's podcasts. There's a variety of resources on meditation online. And I find guided meditation to be so extremely helpful because imagination is key to the success of your meditation. I'm talking about seeing, feeling, smelling, touching, tasting, not with our outer senses, but with our inner senses. I'll give you some really easy examples of simple meditations that you can do today. Now, a lot of times it takes a while for us to build up our focus, but you can try any one of these meditations at any point in your journey. And the better you get at the ones that are easier and more comfortable for you, the better you'll get at all the rest of them. So one simple meditation exercise is the walking meditation. This one, amongst other exercises, I got from Damien Eccles' book, High Magic. I got to listen to him speak at a workshop in California recently. That was really, really cool and extremely helpful for meditation and focus. So the walking meditation. It's very simple. You just take off your shoes, have your bare feet on the ground, and walk slowly in a room. Maybe not too slowly, but just walk casually in the room. You want to be completely and utterly aware of the way your body moves. You want to be aware of what your arms are doing. You want to be aware of what it feels like to step your feet on the carpet. You want to be aware of the clothes on your on your body and whether or not your walking is in any way disrupting the clothes. It's just really about getting your awareness heightened and focusing your awareness on what it is that's going on right then and there. It's just an exercise. Another example is the hearing meditation. Close your eyes somewhere in a public space, baby and listen, just listen to the sounds. Just sit there and listen. Pick out one sound and listen to that sound only and just follow it for a while. And then pick out a different sound. Listen to that one sound only and follow it for a while. Again, focused attention, focused awareness. One exercise that Damien led us in during the workshop was the uh, prison cell meditation. Now, um, I'm just gonna kind of summarize, but basically you're, you imagine yourself in a prison cell and it's the most bare prison cell you can possibly imagine. There's a bed there and there's four walls. I don't know that the door needs to be there. There could be a door, I guess. But the main um, attraction of this prison cell is this square window kind of at the top of, of your wall. It's high enough to where you can't just get there 
on the ground. You have to get up on the bed. You have to stand on the bed. You have to reach up onto the windowsill of this tiny little window up there. And you got to really imagine, he emphasized, imagine what it feels like being in that prison cell and touching the cold stone wall. Feel the cold stone wall under your, under your fingertips. Feel it against your arms and your body as you try to lift yourself up on uh, by this windowsill. I can't do one pull up to save my life, but I can imagine what it feels like to really struggle to lift my body up and reach my gaze beyond the windowsill. And once your gaze reaches beyond the windowsill, bright, beautiful light floods your vision and floods the entire room, floods your body. It's all the kind of process, the mental process, right? And then you come back down and then you do it again. You go up and you grasp onto it and you feel it under your fingertips. I mean, really imagine what it feels like. You can do it. And then just lift yourself up and as soon as your gaze, you know, crests the windowsill, bright, beautiful light floods your vision. It's a very, very interesting process to just really imagine yourself doing something but not physically actually do it. And then the light coming in and flooding your vision and flooding the room and flooding your body, that is energy. That is an energy blueprint that is basically showing your body and your energetic signature. Hey, light's coming in. We're flushing the system out. It's really cool. One more meditation exercise is looking at something, looking at an item, picking an item maybe in your house or even outside anywhere, picking one item and staring at it and focusing on that item so much and focusing on details of this item. What's the shape? What's the color? Does it have any dings? Does it have any wear and tear? Uh, what, what way is the light reflecting? Does it have a sheen uh, reflection on it? Can I see myself in it? Um, you know, any kind of detail that you can possibly imagine, focus on that item and learn its details. And then you move away from that item, look at something else for a while, and you come back to that initial item and see if there's any new things that you've noticed or discovered. Pretty simple. But there are tons of guided meditations that you can do. There are binaural beat meditations on YouTube where they play a frequency that's supposed to be very beneficial for your body and your consciousness, stuff like that. That's all really cool. There's a ton, there's a ton of resources out there. Now, you don't need to devote much time to meditation, but you do need to devote some time. Otherwise, the progress cannot exactly build on itself. Five to 10 minutes a day is perfectly reasonable, especially for people who've got a really tight schedule and don't think they have time to do it. They just don't have time. That's a lie you're telling yourself. You have five to 10 minutes a day to do this. Stop scrolling and do it. And I'm not just talking to you guys, I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to myself most of all. <laughs> Pep talk. So five to 10 minutes a day is sufficient. I would suggest doing 20 minutes a day, maybe three times a week. For me personally, it takes me at least 10 minutes to even get into a zone where I'm, I'm a little bit more focused on like what it is that I'm doing and as opposed to just kind of like, oh, floofing around with my thoughts. Like I said, that's totally fine. But you know, I like to just be in it for at least 10 minutes and then I like to go to 20. Um, that's just kind of a comfortable range for me. It's not extremely long. Um, so, but it's really dependent on you. It's all up to you on how much you feel comfortable doing this. You know, obviously adjust your time as necessary. And just remember everyone's comfort level, progress and success is different and unique. So please don't compare your progress. Do yourself a favor. My last note on this is pretty much the fact that like I am, and this is just a personal, a personal thing. I am able to focus when the stakes are high. When the stakes are high, meaning it's my job. I have to focus to do this job because I'm getting paid for it. People are relying on me. I will starve if I don't do this. There's obviously motivation <laughs> that comes along with that to the point where we're really able to focus on what we're doing. The question is, when there are no stakes, and especially no personal stakes, I mean, when there are no stakes to whether or not you're sitting here and focusing your attention, can you still do it? Can you do it? Are you going to do it? That's just the question. Can you focus when there's nothing else pressuring you to focus and you're just you wanting to do it because of the enormous benefits? Can you do it? So yeah, that's my tidbit on meditation, guys. I will link some resources in the description. If anybody has any other uh, meditation exercises or resources that they really love, please feel free to share those in the comments. Feel free to join me on my Facebook page, Star Family Reunion. It is just a party of awakened people talking about what we're going through and what we're learning. So I'd love for you to join me there. 
good luck meditating, guys. Hopefully this video was helpful to you, and I just wish you all the best. See everybody on the internet.